There are so many different things that we're meant to do to live a fruitful life, because that's the point, right? God wants you to live a fruitful and blessed life, and this is the path to do it. He's saying, this is the vehicle. Do this. And what they saw was that it was written down on stone. You guys can say stone out loud. Say stone. It was written down on stone. And it was written down on stone. This is, if you do these things, this is bad. This is what takes you out of the will of God. This is what separates you from God and blessing and all these things. And it was so difficult. And we look at now and why this is encouraging now is because Jesus came and it said that now the law is not just written on stone, but the law is now written on your heart. That every single thing that we've done wrong of disobedience and anything that you can fill the gap in with that, that he's the one who actually stood in for us so that we may receive his portion. So what I'm about to go over in these blessings are no longer entered into because you're going to do a great job. Like the whole point was that it, you couldn't do it. Like it showed people why they needed Christ, why you needed the power of the Holy Spirit. Like, all right, if this is it, like, whoops, I almost made it through this hour. But I'm willing to forfeit that I'm, that I'm going to get this blessing through my own work and instead, I'm going to honor the work that Jesus did. And then because of his work, enter in the blessing that he deserved. And I'm going to walk you through a couple of what those blessings are because they're actually your inheritance. What I love about it is it says this. This is so cool. I have my Bible here. I wanted to read it in a different translation, but I normally read in, in New King James Version just because this is my favorite commentary. Yet, it's not my favorite thing to read out loud. Remember, I graduated with a 1.8 GPA. God doesn't call the qualified, qualifies the call, which is what I'm going to read to you guys. But one of the cool things I love about this is it says that, and all these blessings shall come upon you and overtake you. And I think that that was like probably the best part that I read before I ever got into what the blessings that God says, this is what you deserve. Like this is what you're going to get. Not because of what you do or anything. But just because you're saying, Jesus, I know that you died so that I may receive what you're supposed to have, and this is what you're supposed to have, and this is my portion. I wrote this down for you. The difference between where you are and where you want to be is exactly the same as what you know and what you have not learned. This is why if the man does not grow, the business doesn't grow. If we do not grow, if we don't learn anything different, if we don't know what God says, bro, where are you going to enter in? And the good thing is, is these blessings are going to pursue you. You guys cool with that? I love it. So I talked about that in Deuteronomy 27, it talks about even laws on stones. Like that's even what it's talked about. I want you to know that these laws are now written on your heart. There's also a place for disobedience. But it says that if you love me, you'll obey my commands. And, and when you listen to that, depending on what type of dad you had, there's a very interesting way you can perceive that. It could be like, if you love me, you'll obey my commands. Yet, what it, what it is is showing is it's a fruit of loving God. It's like a response. It's like a fruit of, an example of, if you love me, one of the ways to tell, one of the ways to measure is if you're desiring to obey what he says. And the benefit of obeying what he says is even this right here. I'm going to read Deuteronomy 28 to you guys. And then I, I want to give you guys a, a topic to go into with elite teams. Now it shall come to pass, if you delightly and diligently obey the voice of the Lord your God to observe carefully all his commandments, which I command you today, and that the Lord your God will set you high above all the nations of the earth. Okay, that's pretty crazy, uh, but a lot of these are pretty crazy. And if I stop on every one, it's like too crazy. All these blessings shall come to you, come upon you, and overtake you because you obey the voice of the Lord your God. That's a promise. Blessed shall, be, shall you be in the city, and blessed shall you be in the country. Blessed shall the fruit of your body be, the produce of your ground, and the increase of your herds, the increase of your cattle, and the offspring of your flocks. Blessed shall be your basket and your kneading bowl. Blessed shall, be, blessed shall you be when you come in, and blessed shall you be when you go out. The Lord will cause your enemies who rise against you to be defeated before your face. They shall come out against you one way and flee before you seven ways. The Lord will command the blessing on you in your storehouses and in all to which you set your hand. And he will bless you in the land which the Lord your God has, is giving you. The Lord will establish you as a holy people to himself, just as he has sworn to you. 
If you keep the commandments of the Lord your God and walk in his ways, then all the people of the earth shall see that you are called by the name of the Lord and they shall be afraid of you. And the Lord will grant you plenty of goods in the fruit of your body, in the increase of your livestock, and in the produce of your ground. Isn't it interesting that he said that twice on the things that most people are most worried about? It's like, okay, I get the future generations, but he's literally talking about the very things that people are all so obsessed about is, okay, but what about my business and the things I care about and this thing and that thing and my family? Said it twice. The Lord will open to you his good treasure, the heavens, to give you rain for your land in its season and to bless all the work of your hand. So specific, all the work of your hand. And I'm just saying this because it's so easy to allow the experiences that we have in life to shift the standard of life that we expect to live. I just went through this. I don't believe that biblically we are meant to ever get sick, ever. Yet I had an experience. But am I going to allow what I believe God's saying to shift because of an experience? Or am I going to continue to believe what God says until my experiences start changing? 